I don't know about you, but I am actively looking forward to the future of the Digimon TCG, most notably the creation of brand new cards that add to our eternal card pool and make everything stronger, or more recent announcements of the first ever IRL Nationals being held in my home state of California. So in today's video, I thought we'd take a little peek at that future of the Digimon TCG and look at a match from the upcoming set, Cross Encounter. Luckily for us, this format has existed for a really long time in the Japanese version of the game, and my boy card protagonist has made a ton of awesome videos covering decks from this format. If you guys don't know, card protagonist is a Singapore-based content creator who makes really high-quality gameplay videos showcasing the different archetypes of every new format in the Digimon TCG. And today we're going to be reacting to the match he had between Crossheart, which is looking to be one of the best decks of the format, and Dark Nightmon, which is looking to be a fan favorite moving forward with all the brand new support from set 10. Welcome back everyone, my name is Steven, I'm your true champion, and today we're going to be reacting to some awesome Digimon gameplay. Let's get started. Alright y'all, here we are, I have the match pulled up between Crossheart, one of the scariest decks to beat out of set 10, and Dark Nightmon, I think a fan favorite deck that has a really cool amount of interaction points that will hopefully be showcased in this video. But enough talking, let's get to the action, 3, 2, 1, Digital Gate open. Open. Feels good every time. I go Pagumon into Monitamon. Searcher for the archetype. Next, I did you go Monitamon into Skull Nightmon. Okay, good. This is happening early. A really cool point I want to talk about with the like Skull Nightmon Deadly Axemon stuff is it's a really good example of another black archetype that Bandai has sort of slow rolled into giving us, as in giving us the main support cards like three plus sets ago and giving us the actual payoff for those cards in a set way later down the line. <coughs> Alpha Mon 2.0, essentially. Really weird that they do that, but it's a trend. Digitama, hatch. I'll be your pick months to shot one. Okay, so I think now's a good time to talk about, like, if you've ever seen a cross heart deck, it, like, makes no sense, like, uh, intuitively how all the cards work together, but basically it doesn't matter what color they are because they're all cross hearts. They can all evolve onto each other. So there's nothing wrong there. And you're going to see it's built on tamers and hard playing of Digimon. So it feels like a rookie rush deck, but it actually has really powerful advantage engines within it. Uh, so hopefully you'll see more and more as this match goes on, what really makes this deck broken. But for now, I know there's so many different colors, but I I promise it all works. All my cross hearts can be drawn into other cross hearts without color restriction. There you go, that's why. Too to play Hero of the Skies. Its main ability, I can activate one of the effects. However, if I'm a Digimon with Shock 1 Cross 5 in its name, I can activate all effects instead. So now I'll draw two cards. This is a really cool benefit to playing so many different colors of Digimon. There are a ton of powerful option cards that you can now just seamlessly include to your deck that are more generic and can be super helpful. Obviously, this one is archetype specific, but you're going to see things like maybe Sunrise Buster, Gaia Force, or other random inclusions as option cards for this deck just to make it even more powerful. I'll pay three memory to play at G. Mm -hmm. There's and the other part of the engine. I can play one Dorulmon from my hand or one of my tamers without paying this cost. I'll play Dorulmon from my hand. Nice. And G's second skill. Nokia for level four. Cross hearts in his traits. I can suspend this tamer to draw one card. So I believe the four main tamers you play are Mikey slash I think it's called Taichi in the US, uh, Angie or Akari. Uh, the the Benji guy or the guy with the like hobo stick and then Christopher's I think the main memory tamer uh, They're all different color tamers and you play like four of all of them So this deck has like that slow roll setup type feel to it to where the longer the game goes on the more and more resources It gets but it can be just as explosive as any rookie rush or OTK deck Turn Crazy My turn, draw. I play Skull Knight Bond Mighty X mode. Nice there's just, there's so many of these dudes. I can review the top three cards on my deck. Afterwards, I can add one card with Nightmon in his name, Deadly Xmon, or a Nene Amono from among them to my hand and trash the remaining cards. I add Dark Nightmon to my hand. And the That's the main guy from set seven. Turn cards. Active base, 
stand and drop. Shut mon to battle area. First start, I use the rule mon to attack your security. Security, check. The rule mon. Go mon security skill. At the end of the battle, I can review the top card of my deck. And if that card is a black Digimon with 4 costs or less, I can play it without paying its memory cost. Afterwards, I add the remaining cards to my hand. This is a really cool example, this Dorumon here, of another sort of subset of generic support from set 10, which I think people call security rookies. Basically, they're rookie D Digimon that have really powerful effects when they're checked in security. Another good example of one that's going to see a lot of play is the green Pulsemon. I open the top card of my deck, kill Shiro. I add it to my hand. Nice. Afterwards, Dorumon comes into my hand as well. Basically, a Next, plus one. Shot one to attack your security. Pixmon skill. While attacking, if this Digimon is a cross heart, I can draw one card. It's actually a plus two because you're adding the Koshiro as well as the Doraemon. Shot more on the skill. Save. Okay, so save is a really important mechanic to make sure you understand properly. There's save and then there's material save. So the way save works normally is basically if this Digimon would be deleted or removed from the board, you can place it underneath uh, one of your tamers. And then material save is if you have any Digimon with actual inheritables, you can save a certain number of them and place them underneath tamers as well. That's why these decks love to have a ton of different tamers in play. So that way you can kind of keep your resources on the board instead of putting them in the trash. And you'll see why that's important later. I may place this card under one of my tables on my field. I place it under MG. I'll end my turn by paying three memory to play my team. There he is. On play, I check the top four cards of my deck. From among them, I can add one card with cross hearts in its straits to my hand and one Digimon card with cross hearts in its straits under this tamer. I'll add Sparrowmon to my hand mm -hmm. and Ballista Mon under my team. I use Mighty X mode to attack the Rulemon. Nice. The Rulemon's on save skill. I'll save it under MG. Gone but never forgotten. The Ohana deck of Digimon. <laughs> attack your security. Star Knight one skill. When attacking, I can trash all Digivision cards from one of my deadly X Mon and place it to the bottom of this Digimon card to Digivolve it into a Dark Knight Mon. Mm -hmm. Since my TX Mon is treated as a Skull Knight Mon and Deadly X Mon, I feel Skull Knight Mon and Deadly X Mon into Dark Knight Mon. The attack continues. Yeah, this is basically DNA Digivolving at home. Instead of actually putting the stacks on top of each other before you attack, you do it in the middle of the attack. Instead of gaining an attack, you're still just doing one single attack, but you're gaining a bunch of inheritables, which is still really good. Thanks to Shaw Nightmon's inheritable skill, this Digimon has Nightmon in his name. He gets security attack plus one. Solid. You need a 7k double breaker. Security, check, NG. Oh. <laughs> we all know that feeling of playing against tamer based decks of checking tamers and security oh look a free uninteractable resource for my opponent you're welcome i guess for attacking you insane second check Cross okay it still would have died Scout anyway down i want skill when he's deleted i can play one scout knight mon and the ex mon suspended that were in its evolution source Oh, what's that? Crossheart? You're not the only deck that can kind of be invulnerable to removal. My deck can do that too. Love to Scout see it. And Scout Knight Mon, Deadly X Mon. Hagumon skill. I can review the top card of my deck. If it is a black Digimon card, I can add it to my hand. Deadly X Mon, add it to my hand. My TX Mode skill. When played, I review the top three cards on my deck. I add. Deadly X Mon to my hand, and the rest goes into my trash. Yeah, that's the other one from set 7, I think. Deadly Axe. Placing each of his materials from my hand or battle area to the bottom of his Digivolution mm. source, I can reduce the play cost of my Dark Knight Mon by 2. I Digicross the Skull Knight Mon on my field and the Deadly X Mon in my hand in order to form Dark Knight Mon. Who knew that the Dark Nightmon deck was going to be the first one to Digicross in this game? Uh, so if you guys don't know, Digicross is basically going to be a pseudo form of DNA Digivolution. But instead of the cards having to be in play, they can be either from hand or board. And instead of evolving for free, you're actually reducing the play cost of whatever Digimon you're Digicrossing into by the appropriate number based on how many cards you place underneath. So that's the basic idea. It's a way to reduce play cost instead of evolve for free, but in both situations, you're gaining really powerful multiple inheritables. Since I use two materials to create Dark Nightmon, its cost is reduced by four. Mm -hmm. Dark Nightmon on play skill, I can de-digivolve one of your Digimon. Then, if I digicross with two materials, I can delete one of your Digimon with play cost five or less. 
A thing I really love about Digicross is, I don't know if you've ever had this experience in playing Digimon, but whenever you have a really big hand, unless you're specifically a blue deck and you gain a lot of advantage or effects by having a big hand, there's a lot of just dead cards in there that have a lot of specific names. So if you can convert a lot of those multiple cards into really powerful Digimon that have instant on-play effects, I think it's totally worth it. So it's a really cool mechanic that I think solves a fundamental problem of drawing two many cards in Digimon. That being said, it's still a little bit crazy. I delete the Rumon. The Rumon is deleted. Safe. And the Ash. Mm -hmm. Turn pass. My turn. Draw. Digitama hatch. Our Digimon picks Mon into Sparrowmon. Powerful. If I give out Digi Cross, I can rest his Tamer. Here we go. Materials under my Tamers as well. Our Digicross, Shotmon, Balistamon, Dorulumon, and Starmon into Shotmon Cross Pop. <sighs> there it is. The card that if they want to properly balance this archetype, need to limit or just straight up ban. Once you see how many different effects this guy has, you're going to understand what I mean. Since I use four materials for this Digicross, I reduce the cost by eight. Make it one. One cost. Four on base skill, I can draw two cards. Pot agreed. Both my table and this skill. When I cross out enters a few, I can rest his tamers to draw two cards. Pot agreed part two, electric boogaloo. <laughs> shot one ears skill. Do my turn. While this Digimon has shot one in its name, it gains rush. It's now one cost by Shiagumon. I'll attack Mighty X mode with cross four. Starmon skill. Draw one card. Uh, At least someone gives uh, more piercing. cards. And it has piercing? Is Jesus check. Christ. Cross force piercing. Break one of the shoes. Security check. Nay. Ooh, Tamer. I forgot she was the tamer for the start time. I can look at the top four cards on my deck. So among them, I can add one Nightmon, Daily Xmon, or Digimon with Twilight in its traits to my hand. I add Dark Nightmon to my hand, Nice. it goes to the bottom of my deck. Also, during your turn, Nene gives all my Digimon with Dark Nightmon in his name and Digimon with Twilight in their traits blocker. That'll be helpful and for all these the Rush Digimon. To play Christopher. Yep, there's the memory tamer. Four. Was that three different colors of tamers in play? Jesus. Digitama hatch. First up, I use Dark Knight Mon to attack your security. Thanks two damage. Yeah. Yes, that's skill. Dark Knight Mon gains an extra two k. Do you not attack X four here just to get it off the board? Oh, oh, wait, there's D-Dig involved in this deck, right? So maybe you're trying to play around the material save. Plus, you know, you have two damage right here, right? So you may as well do that to keep up with the damage race that's currently happening. Yeah, yeah, attacking security is correct. DP, thanks to Skull Nightmon, he gains security effect plus one, making him a 9k double breaker. Security, check. Security skill, Tamer set. The gang's all here! Jeremy, that was his name. I've never seen Digimon Cross Wars. Sorry. One, nice! But he's someone gains blocker. Second check, Shaman King Mode. Ooh, so that Shaman's actually really cool. I believe it's one of the secret rares from BT10, and it's basically considered a Shaman at all times, but if you ever need it for like Digicrossing, you can make it whatever piece you're missing because Digicrossing is actually name specific. So let's say you only have Dorulo, Ballista, and a regular Shaman, but you also want a Starmons to make your X4 ultimately powerful. You can use King Mode to fill that slot. Really cool. For each of the Tamer and Digimon in play, this Digimon's cost is reduced by 3. Death X Mon! Death X Mon! Let's go! Nice big board, one. idiot! Death X Mon for. <laughs> Death X Mon skill, I can de off your entire board. As someone who has played many. Uh, Death X Mons for free. This one feels really good because not only are you playing around the material save of Shoutmon X4, you're getting rid of two bodies at the same time while playing a 15,000 DP monster. Afterwards, Super cool. You will delete all of your level 4 or lower Digimon. I'll say Shoutmon and Balisamon into Mikey. So yeah, that's why it's really cool to get rid of or play around the material save because in doing so, you're only giving one piece back to card protagonist when he would have gotten all four back or I think three back using X Force effect. I pay four memory to set Koshiro. Nice memory tamer. Koshiro skill. I reveal the top three cards on my deck. Since all of them are black, I gain one memory. Continuing my turn. Afterwards, I can rearrange them as I like. Are we gonna see Dark Diamond next? Anybody? I want to see it. Argumon into Toy Argumon. Powerful. 
our X Digivolve Dark Knight Mon into Dark Knight Mon X. Let's go! Let's it's the boy! Game. When Digivolving, I can return one of my black or purple Digimon from my trash back into my hand. I return Mighty X mode to my hand. Afterwards, if it has a Dark Knight Mon or X in the body in its evolution source, I can delete one Tamer and reactivate. I delete Tamer Mighty. So yeah, this is one of those interaction points that I was talking about that I really like about the Dark Knight Mon deck is it's another form of tamer removal slash interaction. For once, it's not just Black War Greymon chilling by himself. We have other ways to turn off these really setup slash kind of snowball-y strategies. Love to see it, and I'm sure a lot of English players are going to kind of go towards this kind of strategy if they want to beat Crossheart rather than just play it themselves. My piece deleted. Dark Nightmon reactive. Turn pass. Okay, this is a really great board state for Dark Nightmon. He has three attackers, one of which is a really powerful blocker and two security. But as I'm sure y'all have been keeping track at home, the Crossheart player has a ton of cards in hand. So it's totally realistic for them to have a Crossheart in play with Rush and a whole other slew of effects. So we have to wait and see. Four memory is quite a lot for this deck. Active face, stand, and draw. Thanks to the NSQ, Dark Knight Mon X gains blocker. Sparrow Mon to battle area. Mm -hmm. We need a lot here. Shark Mon, Ballista Mon, Dorulu Mon, Star mm -hmm. Mon, and Sparrow Mon, Digicross. In He's not even crossing from board. He has every single piece in hand. And that's the uh, SR Shark one, Mon right? Cross five. Yep, cross five. That's free. Five materials for his Digicross. It's a free Digimon. Reduced by 10. With and Rush? Free. <laughs> oh my god. Memory, I gained one memory. Wow, he actually gained memory by playing a 10 cost card. <laughs> Insane. Shot one ESQ, cross five gains rush. Mm -hmm. Cross five will attack your security. But he has no Start battle protection, so this block will be pretty, pretty pog. ESQ, all your security Digimon loses 2000 DP. Shot one cross five is a double breaker with piercing. Very well, I'll block their attack with Dark Knight Mon. Since Dark Knight Mon has 12k DP, I delete Shot one cross five. Cross fights with you save three. Yep. I'll look Shark Mon, Bali Summon, and Star Mon into Crystal. The rest goes to the Keep rest. the draw, keep the rush, Spare keep the piercing. Really Spare. important. Pick Simon skill, draw one card. Not once per turn draw, by the way. Weirdly enough. 3k DP, make it 5k. Security, check. Dark Knight Mon. Spare Mon is the turn. That's another save. I'll save. Spare Mon into Crystal. I'll pay three memory to play. Mikey. Oh, he yeah, another Mikey as well. I forgot about that. Oh, there's the X4. You gotta take the hand, right? Yep, okay. And cross four goes to my hand. Love it. The rest goes to the bottom of my deck. At least Sparamon can't be used for cross four. I can use materials under Tamers for Digicross. Sharkmon, Balisamon, Dorulumon, and Starmon Digicross 2. Sharkmon, cross four. He's gonna draw more cards. One cause. Two cuts. Oh man. Thanks to Shot One, I use Crossfall to attack your security. Oh no, is he gonna like unsuspend Mikey and then go for another cross five with Rush to win the game? Is that what's about to happen right now? Oh my gosh, no way. Security, check. No room on. Security skill, good. I'm gonna top card on my deck. Since Monitor One has play cost four less, I play it directly to my suit. Well, it's do or die time now. Thanks to Hey, since Monitamon has Twilight in Monita is a blocker! Oh, that's Very sick. Well, at the end of battle, cross four skill, yeah. I replace all of these Digimon evolution cards under one of my tamers in order to underspend one of my tamers. I will load all my materials into Mikey. And Mikey reactives. It's basically a dual attacking Digimon with Rush. Once again, I'll rest Mikey. I digicross two, shot one, cross four. Another cross four? That's the fourth one! <laughs> this is why this card needs to be limited. Oh my god, this card is so strong. You draw one card. I'll use a Mitamon to block that attack. A Mitamon is spent immediately. At the end of battle, I'll load all materials to Mikey. Reactive to Mikey. <sighs> and we just have the cross five, don't we? I'll rest my key to Digicross 2, Shark Mon, Cross 5. There he is. They always have a rush. Cross 5. GG. Dark Naimon gave it his absolute all, but Cross Heart is just too powerful. Draws too many cards and attacks way too many times. Let's take a look at these decks. 
so I think this is a pretty standard uh, Dark Nightmon list. We have all the powerful boys in the brand new Dark, Dark, Dark Nightmon X, the brand new Dark Nightmon, the main two Deadly Axe and Skull Knight, and then we have uh, the new uh, guy from set 10 as well. We're not seeing any Cavalier mode. Instead, we're uh, favoring the Grumble for some extra late game advantage or pressure. And then we have the Pride Memory Boost, which lets us play every single one of our level fours and level threes, barring Grumble, good slew of Tamers, and of course, the Death Exmon tech really strong. I would actually like to see a third copy of Death Exmon if you can find room for it. Uh, and then let's check out the cross heart deck. Bang. So this is, again, pretty standard, I think. Just four ofs of all the really important pieces. Uh, we are playing the BT5 Starmon. And, of course, we're playing Chris and Taikami as our memory setters. Uh, I would like to see room for cards like sunrise buster because a majority of your deck is red and yellow uh, it lets you play all these really powerful tamer cards for free while also being a powerful removal spell uh so maybe you can like cut one of these options cut a tie or a christopher and maybe just cut these star mons all together to find room for sunrise buster really powerful card that just helps accelerate this deck that's already so super fast but there you guys go this is the future of the digimon tcg english format uh cards like x4 are really unfair and super powerful and if you want to kind of combat this deck in the future with some kind of banner limited list i think it has to be this card but for now it's at full power and it's gonna be a lot of fun with all that being said i've been your true champion steven be sure to leave a like and subscribe peace